No, bro. Fuck. I'm finally getting shit. Bro, my game has been getting hit from I have gotten so many comments asking for some tips and tricks videos, and while I have a history of that from a few games in my earlier days, honestly there are so many people doing great work in that area when it comes to this game, so I'm just super thankful and so, so blessed to have people watching the gameplay and the new series on the channel. But with that being said, I have taken quite a bit of time on the side to binge watch so many newcomers on Twitch, Discord, and wherever else I could find you all, little rascals, and I've learned some very naughty habits that you guys have, and as most wacky and random things I do observe, some of you are not going to think they matter, and if you don't finish this or walk away scoffing after watching it all, jokes on you when someone who watched this entire video and took it a bit more seriously runs into you because you're probably not going to win that fight. So without further ado, let's dive into some of your disgusting, or in some cases, oblivious and innocent, but still absolutely abysmal and cringeworthy bad habits in Ghosts of Tabor. First up, one of the things you can start doing right now to keep yourself alive more often in raid seems pretty simple when it's said, but so many people just do not seem to realize that, and it absolutely crushes me on the inside when I watch people making this simple mistake. And it's all out of pure reflex, but all of you out there who go straight for your sight alignment, no matter what the situation is, mid range or close up, just stop it. You can never rely on using your sights 100% of the time and expect to stay alive consistently, especially in the heat of the moment. Start using chest fire as much as possible in close quarter situations and get the feel for where your natural center point is on your weapon and you will definitely start to see the improvement. And speaking of the chest, if you keep your body turned at any sort of angle while firing or just turn your head without turning your stick or more of the pivot on the hips to turn your character's body, there is a chance you are going to be exposing the opening on the sides of your vest, leaving space for the rounds to hit your vitals. So keep your feet planted in a triple threat position when you can in a direct firefight to keep your fleet forward on your vest as much as possible and allow your armor to be taken those rounds. If you're using a V-stock, which I recommend, this is even better. But either way, I have seen plenty of people on streams that completely turn their entire body sideways every time they fire. Next up, I am sure most of you have already heard this before, so I'll make this pretty straightforward. Stop dropping your mags halfway through their remaining ammunition, especially on the island. This is not Pavlov and you will not be needing 50 rounds on full auto to take someone out at just three meters unless you are of course a super noob in vr which is fine too welcome to vr and i hope you find your place moving on this one is something that hits home for me looting in the open now the reason looting in the open hits home for me isn't because it's a bad habit of mine but more so because i can't even count how many teams including entire squads i've completely annihilated because they had just taken someone out and i or me and my team heard the fire but instead of waiting to see if anyone responded they immediately ran to claim their prizes so as we roll up they are there in the wide open if you do find yourself in a situation where you fought in the open already in relatively close distance to one another you want to snag his loot grab that entire bag and either toss it behind nearby cover or run away with that to a secure spot and scour through it rather than gawking at the bag like you just hit the ghetto lotto or something it's just a bag bro calm down you can do this charlie i will also add really quick really quick that if you're the person pushing a situation don't just run directly at the fire you heard do yourself a massive solid and take the route with the most vertical approach even if that path is a bit delayed and you can thank me later the next and one of the most important things that i'm seeing a lot of oversight with and ultimately our next topic of failure for tons of you out there with a lot of you that are going to be in denial about this because some just aren't gamer brained as much as others but i find it extremely interesting that so many quest users still use the stock audio that came with the headset and still believe it's just fine somehow maybe for something like freaking job simulator or walking a plank with some friends in the room sure maybe 
just maybe even some rec room perhaps, but any shooter that takes spatial audio seriously, you should be just as serious about your audio. If it's trash, then expect your gameplay experience in this game to definitely reflect that same stank jank, no spatial awareness, having stock crap strap you love and adore so much that you won't let it go. Just let it go, dude, and upgrade to something, okay? Anything. Dollar Store earbuds will literally give you more location information than what you got going on with those. Okay, high speed, moving on. Another serious one that gets a lot of people taken out in my lobbies are all of you pop shot Timmy Toms out there who just can't help but shoot everything you see. I will make this one super short. If you don't have a direct need to take out NPCs and you aren't rocking silencers, don't just go around and draw unnecessary attention to yourself. Even if you are complete Chuck Norris in VR, playing smarter rather than harder is key sometimes. And this rule especially applies if you're on low lying areas like the beach versus Radio Hill or something like that. Now, about the bags, really quick, because after watching so many on Twitch, again, one massive habit I'm seeing is just driving me insane. And I don't even know if it's really called a habit because it seems to be just really random and it might be minute to some, but honestly, I really believe it matters more than most would ever guess. I just can't stand watching so many people out there grabbing their bags eight different ways in one single raid, especially in silo. Do yourself a huge favor and win way more random pop-up fights by trying to stay consistent with which hand you are doing particular tasks like grabbing your bag. Be logical in regards to the possible outcomes and for me, the most logical thing if possible, keeping my finger near that trigger at all times in tight spots. For this, I'm always taking my offhand, reaching to the same shoulder, so I'm basically just folding my arm directly up to the respective shoulder and grabbing to check my bag out. If I need to access it, of course, I'm going to place my weapon on my chest, but the most important thing for me at that point is to keep my bag and hands in a general area or at least level where it would be the easiest to just drop the bag and grab my weapon simultaneously. This pretty much sums that up, but keep in mind this one really matters for those tight areas because it will absolutely save your behind. I can guarantee it. One of the final bad habits here, and it's one that's definitely going to take you off guard probably, this rule applies to basically all VR shooters, and especially for those out there who want to be consistent with them. This is going to hurt a lot of your feelings, but it's okay because it hurts mine too. Because I fit in this category. Well, it's actually one of two categories that I'm finding most common for VR FPS gamers, and these two things are the reason a lot of you get those jitters in fights. Sure, adrenaline is a huge factor, so you're going to have some insane moments where you think that your heart's about to pop out of your chest, but honestly, a lot of shaking can be mitigated by either cutting back on the caffeine intake before your gaming sessions or simply making sure that you have more carbs, you know, just protein overall, energy source, whether you get it from fat or whatever, and just overall, you need the more fullness feeling. Tracking in VR is just getting better and better, and it's more noticeable with the extreme precision so your little shaky diabetes feeling self because you didn't eat enough or had too much Red Bull is definitely going to cause some issues if you're trying to hit shots from any sort of notable distance. And finally, the biggest and the worst habit I'm seeing out there right now, particularly with newcomers to this game genre, regardless of it being in VR, is what is called gear fear. For most players, bringing in massive loadouts that cost well over 100 grand in game currency just prevents you from making choices that would otherwise be the right ones. Experienced players can dominate because they'll play the same way no matter what they're wearing. But let's be honest, how much do you really care about that $50,000 vest rig and that 100 something thousand dollar AK that you just decked out? Will you push when it's the right thing to do, or will your preservation instincts keep you from making what seems to be, at the time, risky choices that would, at any other point, seem like a reasonable and logical choice because your confidence level, contrary to what you would think, is actually diminished by the fact you can almost bet you have way less to lose than the guy stacked on your door with his homies. Even as an experienced VR FPS player with thousands of hours, I rarely rock a maxed out vest or helmet. I'll play decked weapons, but in general, even without gear fear on my mind, in my opinion, I would much rather be able to play loose when I want, increase my capabilities with my weapons and the choices I make in those fights. So while I'm going to continue to rock my mid-tier gear with at least one drum mag if I can, and if I'm solo, a ton of backup standard mags to something simple, like an AKM or an M4. 
But whatever your choice is, if you feel too worried about all the fancy gear, sell the most expensive stuff and you can play longer and harder with mid-tier and who knows, maybe you'll have more fun that way like me and who also knows, maybe, just maybe, you'll be checking out this insane raid footage that I posted recently that will definitely make you question what's possible in this game and hopefully push you to take it to the next level, I, I promise. But yeah, all that happens after you hit this little button down here, get subscribed, because it really is just awesome to share these types of things in the gameplay that I get to enjoy with you, so if you enjoy it, I'll see you later. Stay blessed, take these little habits and just... Stop. Stop it now. God bless you all. Peace out.